Pedro, we're here at this conference in Crete on fine-tuning of physics. Uh, um, from the standpoint of a working cosmologist, theoretical cosmologist, uh, how do you view fine-tuning, which heretofore, although has come out of the sciences, obviously, in physics and cosmology, uh, has been taken up more by philosophers, even theologians. So, so as a working cosmologist, uh, how do you view the kind of the environment of fine-tuning? So as a working cosmologist and as a working physicist, I think generally, to be honest, we don't really worry about fine-tuning. You know, it, it, things are what they are and we just work with them. But if, when you start to delve a little bit more deeply, it becomes interesting. So, you, you know, the, 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 the statement, things are what they are, why are they what they are? Um, you could ask that about anything, even if, even if the, 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 the things that you're looking at are similar and, and make sense or, and, and, and are natural, you can still ask that question. But what you find in physics is often, um, for example, parameters in a theory have very disparate values. You know, they, 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 one parameter is many orders of magnitude right. different from another parameter. Why is that so? And that leads into another problem to do with fine-tuning, which is this disparity. There's this concept of naturalness, that parameters should be more or less the same. Same orders of magnitude. Same so orders of magnitude. And classically, so, electromagnetism being 10 to the 39th or 40th mm. times uh, uh, gravity, it doesn't seem natural as a first approximation. And it doesn't seem natural. The parameters, when they're very disparate, they don't seem natural. And the, and the worry, of course, is the way that quantum mechanics feeds into it. Quantum mechanics, what, what are known as radiative corrections, tend to drive things towards each other. So when you have parameters that are very different, nature should, <coughs> the way we understand it, should push, push things to be closer to, to each other. So that's another level of fine-tuning that one worries yeah. about. Um, and, you know, that's a big deal. I think one of the things that people are, uh, are looking at now is we have this incredibly successful model of the, the universe, the standard model and, and of, of cosmology, but one of the problems is there, there are unnatural parameters. For example? The Higgs mass is an unnatural parameter. The Higgs mass has a certain value, but it should be many, 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 many orders of magnitude larger than it is if we, if we let quantum mechanics do its thing. Another parameter which is unnatural is if it exists, and it seems to exist, the cosmological constant. It's, you know, it's a hundred orders classic. of magnitude. You know, classic. 120. It's <laughs> hundreds, hundreds, a hundred orders of magnitude off, off its value. And yeah. so we, we begin to face the problem of, of the naturalness of these parameters that we, we, we need to face. Now, some people say we shouldn't worry about it. We have this mantra of naturalness, that things should be natural. But maybe they don't, they, sh they don't have to be natural. They are what they are. But they, <laughs> they, 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 they are what they are, exactly. And so um, you, you know, some of my colleagues would say they are what they are and we shouldn't worry about it. It's a religion. Naturalness is a religion. It's an aesthetic criteria. Mm -hmm. um, so so fine-tuning really opens up this can of worms of these issues that you can discuss, which are at the border of science and aesthetics. Yeah, one, one of the questions is, uh, what is fine-tuning? Is fine-tuning being within 50% uh, or is it being, uh, if, you, if you deal with 40 orders of magnitude, if you say 50%, people get confused, 10 to the 20th, it's, it's not the same thing, because 10 to the 20th is 10 to the 20th uh, off 10 to the 40th. So w what is the nature of fine-tuning itself? The, the parameters, the boundary conditions. It's very, what do we call fine-tuning? It's very interesting. If something is off by a factor of two, that's fine, right? If something is off by an order of magnitude, by a factor of 10, ten. I think we're, we're comfortable with it. But there's, you know, there is a point where we become uncomfortable. Now, is it when it's off by a factor of a thousand, or is it off when it's, is it when it's off by a factor of a million? There's a gray area. Um, fortunately, a lot of the problems that we have with fine tuning, things are off by many, many orders of magnitude. So it's, so it's clear. It's unambiguous. Uh -huh. um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure if you go back to the history of, of the development of particle physics, that there were things that at the time people considered fine tuning, but now we look back and say, why were we worrying about that given what we're worrying about now? So I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure that the threshold of fine tuning has changed over time. So when you're defining fine tuning, it's in the context of the, uh, of the concept of naturalness, to where things should be about the same order of magnitude, which gives this aesthetic sense that the, that the theory is sort of built properly. When I'm talking about fine tuning, mostly what I talk about is what, I, what I, comes to my mind, and, and I have to, I have to um, just be careful 
I don't work a lot on fine tuning. I may think about it, but I don't investigate oh, sure, fine tuning. Sure. So I, I'm not <laughs> a I'm not a professional fine tuner. Yeah, but, but that's I would, good. But that's good, good because I think a, prof a professional fine tuner is going to build some bias into their work. Sure. I mean, as as a natural. So I like talking to people who are not. Uh, professionally on this, you can look at it and see what it maybe really is. Yes. A lot of people are seriously invested in fine tuning. They, they definitely <laughs> are. They definitely are. Um, so my, you know, my, my view of fine tuning is is it's mostly about naturalness. It's mostly mm -hmm. about things, you know, being close to each mm -hmm. other. That the, the, they should be. It should all be more or less the same order of magnitude. I mean, mm -hmm. I think it is valid to ask. It is a valid question to ask why things have the value they have, regardless. Mm -hmm. You know, why 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 is that thing mm -hmm. one? Um, I'm not sure because yeah. I haven't thought a lot about it how, how we one would answer it and and I can really see two roots one is almost a numerological <laughs> route that things work out perfectly so that's that yeah. way the other is the accidental route which is it doesn't matter that it's one right it really right. doesn't matter that it's one it, you know it could be anything else and it doesn't matter right so um, but planetary the, orbits don't have to be perf exactly. perfect uh, uh, perfect uh, uh, spheres or the perfect <laughs> a perfect example. Yeah. The other interesting thing about fine tuning is why do we worry about the value of parameters? And um, the example of plan planetary orbits is, is a very good one. You know, originally the heliocentric model, there was this there was this yeah. very firm locked-in structure where the planetary orbits were what they were for basically a, a platonic perfection of, exactly. of the heavens. It was that there was a numerological yeah. argument for it yeah. being what it is. We now know that they arise there. First of all, they're accidental. They arise from Newton's law of gravity. Um, but also that they're not stable. There's, there's, um, there's some beautiful work analyzing the history of the solar system and what we might expect in the future. And one of the things we know about the solar system is it's chaotic. And so these planetary orbits will vary, but not right, only right. that, they will flip. Right. So, you know, thing, you know, Mars will be cl closer than the Earth to, mm. to, to the moon at some point. So these constants are completely irrelevant. Mm. Uh, one of the other uh, ways that fine-tuning is viewed is in the context if um, one is the naturalism that they should be the same similar orders of magnitude the other says that if they varied within a certain parameter of of, of what it is then it couldn't ex then the, the 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 phenomena couldn't exist and so therefore the the range of possibility for the phenomena to exist be it a structure of a star or a galaxy or whatever um, is, is 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 seems unnaturally tight that's um there is, there is an aspect of fine-tuning which is to do exactly with uh, um, that if you, if you vary the constants of nature, for example, things that happen now or we see happen wouldn't happen. The really beautiful example is, is the Hoyle case for, the Fred Hoyle case for um, existence of carbon in the universe. He, he looked around, he said there's all this carbon in the universe. It's not made at the beginning of the Big Bang, it's, quite, it's made in stars. Um, he, he, proposed, he conjectured that there was a particular process of what he called a resonance going on, and he conjectured that exist, uh, existed and it was found. And so it's true that it's fine-tuned, you know, the universe is fine-tuned to produce carbon because there are these mm. very specific processes which wouldn't, wouldn't mm. exist if it wasn't, the parameters weren't what they were. Do you see any relationship between the fine-tuning of, of the naturalism of different parameters and the fine-tuning of the range of a specific parameter, or is that just using fine-tuning in two separate ways and no relationship? I think using fine-tuning <laughs> for the naturalness and using fine-tuning for, you know, the, the the, the, its rigidity, I think, are, in my view, are two different things. And so it's just another application of this, this fine-tuning filter that we apply when we try to look at why the universe is how it is.